All right, it looks like we've got a couple more people joining, so I think we can go ahead and get started. And so, hello and welcome to our Jira Service Management for ITSM webinar. We are so glad that you're able to join us today for this overview on how to manage your ITSM processes within Jira Service Management. I'm Brad Wood, and I am a consultant and Atlassian certified professional with Valientis, and we are a Platinum Solutions partner with Atlassian. Today, I'm going to walk you through Jira Service Management to highlight um, many of its strengths and capabilities as related to ITSM processes. This webinar does build upon our Jira Service Management Fundamentals webinar, which we held uh, last week. If you happen to be uh, with us for that webinar, I hope you got some great fundamental knowledge of Jira Service Management. And that webinar, along with this one, um, will be posted to our YouTube channel for those who weren't able to join. Um, and I will just drop the link to our YouTube channel in the chat right now. So feel free to check that out. And um, there's a lot of great content on there, not just with Jira Service Management, but anything Atlassian related. So um, a lot of great content on that uh, YouTube page. And this webinar um, is going to be a little bit more advanced than the fundamentals webinar. And like I said, we're going to focus on the ITSM feature set within Jira Service Management. Uh, these webinars really do go hand in hand to paint um, a complete picture of the powerful features that are available within JSM. Um, it's helpful for this webinar to have a basic understanding of JSM, um, but it is by no means required and it will not inhibit the learning process here this afternoon. Um, some of those topics that we cover in that webinar you can see on the screen here. Um, and uh, like I mentioned, that is available to uh, view on our uh, YouTube page. So feel free to check that out um, at a later time. But today, like I said, we're talking about Jira Service Management for ITSM. We're going to talk through some of the applications that will be used in order to showcase these capabilities, um, such as assets, which is JSM's asset and configuration management tool. It's native to JSM, but only available um, with JSM Cloud Premium um, and is available in JSM uh, Data Center. Ops Genie, which is our alert and incident management system, it's native with JSM Premium and is a separate product for Data Center. Um, automation for Jira, uh, you may already be familiar with this uh, if you're familiar with Jira in some capacity. Um, automation is going to be very uh, uh, familiar to you. It's completely out of the box with JSM. The only difference between the tier levels uh, related to automation is going to be the number of allotted rule executions per month. And Atlassian has made some changes to those uh, limits recently, and you can read about that on their website um, if you need that information. And then lastly, we're going to talk a little bit about status page. This is a completely separate product, not included in any tier of JSM. Uh, it is an Atlassian product, but it's an add-on, and it serves as an internal and external communication solution, which uh, we'll talk about a little bit towards the end of this webinar. And uh, Atlassian themselves actually use this to communicate status updates to products in their ecosystem. Um, so you can check out their status page to see how they're using it to communicate um, to their customers. So we're going to do a couple of demos this morning, um, and these demos will um, cover uh, service management, incident management, and change enablement. Um, service management we do cover in that JSM Fundamentals webinar, but today we're going to take it a step further and talk about how to integrate the assets feature of JSM into your service management process. Uh, next, we'll move on to incident management, and we'll cover how JSM handles incidents um, giving your service desk team the tools they need to respond to incidents in a timely and efficient manner. And we'll touch a little bit on uh, problem management within that section. And then lastly, we'll cover change management. We're gonna discuss how JSM can help manage changes within your organization, uh, give insight into the effects and even possible risks of enacting changes and provide the insight you need to make informed decisions related to changes. We'll also touch a little bit on knowledge management and enterprise service management during this section. Uh, really briefly about us at Valientis, we, like I said, we are a Platinum Solutions partner of Atlassian, and we provide a number of different services based around Atlassian products, 
including solutions, consulting, licensing, and training, like this webinar, for example. We also work with a uh, full stack software development company that creates custom solutions for JIRA through avenues such as app development and API integrations. We offer consulting and licensing services across the entire Atlassian suite of products for organizations of all shapes and sizes anywhere in the world and for any platform, including cloud and data center. And at Valientis, we have the culture and the mindset to make Atlassian products work for you due to our cutting edge curiosity, our commitment to value and our customer centric approach. We're invested in your success and engaged with your strategic goals. And I mentioned our training services. Um, real quick plug for our JSM bootcamp. Um, this is designed for uh, administrators and service desk managers. It's a two day course that we offer. Um, our boot camps are focused on retention and they're interactive workshops um, designed to leave users confident in their understanding and use of the tools and processes. And uh, we do cover um, the ITSM features in this boot camp as well. Um, <clears throat> and our next one is coming up on May 14th. So you can check out, uh, I'll put this link in the chat here, valientis.com slash events. Um, for all the details on that boot camp and all of our other boot camps, we've got a uh, Jira, uh, Jira boot camp, Confluence. Um, we've got um, some private classes available and, and tons of webinars as well. So um, check out valientis.com slash events for all of that information. All right. So with that, let's jump into the uh, first um, demo here. And we're going to be covering asset and service management here. Um, this is really for our service teams or our IT teams. Um, the common challenge that we see a lot of service teams or IT teams face with is how to easily track and manage their assets as well as uh, service requests and um, services in general related to those assets. So what's the solution? Well, it's an easy to maintain assets database that integrates with our ticketing system. And the tools we'll look at here in this demo are uh, Jira Service Management, Assets, and Automation for Jira. So with that, I'm going to start this demo, and I'm going to go to our Help Center. Um, and just a refresher, uh, this is our customer-facing section of JSM in which users can submit requests and their tickets and um, view updates on those tickets, et cetera, and view some knowledge base articles. Um, there's a lot of functionality within the Help Center. We're not going to go to this uh, in extensive detail on the Help Center uh, this morning, but like I mentioned, we do uh, cover this in our fundamentals webinar, which again, you can view on our YouTube page if you'd like a, um, a complete overview of the Help Center. So I'm going to go down here to our IT service desk portal, and then I'll go to our computers portal group, and I'm going to click request a new laptop. And now we can see there's a request form here uh, for me to fill out and um, all of the fields that are included on that request type I see in order to um, submit this request type. Uh, we can see um, the request type here. I'm going to raise this on behalf of myself. I need to select a reason for um, requesting this new laptop. So I'll just say my current equipment is damaged. And then we have a, uh, a text box here. I'll just say I dropped it and it won't turn on anymore. And um, that field here, reason for requesting new laptop, I will mention is a custom field that we've uh, configured with these three custom dropdown options, which can be really helpful for your uh, request forms. And um, we see this, which model would you like field here at the bottom? <clears throat> this appears to be, um, a similar field to that field I just mentioned, just a regular old drop-down field, but this is actually an assets object field and is integrated directly with our assets management system. And you can see when I click in here, the drop-down options look a little bit differently. We see some thumbnail images for these objects. We see um, some details on the different laptops that I could select. And so I'll select just the MacBook Pro 13 inch and when I select one of these options, I'm actually selecting a specific object that's built out in our assets database. And we'll look at how that's built out here in just a little bit on the back end. Um, but for now, I've got my request form filled out and I'm going to click send. 
And then another just quick refresher on um, what we're seeing here as the customer. This is the ticket I just submitted. We can see all of the details that I um, that I put in when I submitted this request form. So why do I need that laptop? Uh, what happened? What laptop would I like as a replacement, um, et cetera. And so uh, just a quick reminder too, that this is that customer facing side of JSM. Your users do not need a license to be able to submit requests via the portal. So your customers are unlicensed users, um, cutting down on those costs for licenses in Jira service management. Um, we see here the status of this ticket is waiting for approval. And this is actually leveraging automation on the back end to automatically set an approver when this request was submitted. And we'll look at who that approver is as we head into the back end of JIRA now. Um, I'll just click this link. Note that that link is not uh, active for your customers, but since I'm an agent in this instance, um, I can use this link to take me to the back end of JSM. So now we're looking at the um, agent facing side or the back end of Jira service management. This is the request I just submitted. And um, there are some things on this ticket that are unique to this request type, um, mostly because of that asset object field I was talking about laptop models. So we can see here that same thumbnail, that same information about this laptop, but as an agent, there is more information I'm able to see about this um, object, which is pulling directly from our assets database. So if I click this drop down show details, we can see a lot uh, more information about this MacBook. So we can see the name, the vendor, the screen size, um, some technical information about it. And then we also see a status on this object. So your, your objects in your assets database can have a status associated with them. And this one has been set to the offered status. Um, this is also utilizing automation, providing visibility into the state of this specific object. This is also gonna be reflected in the assets database itself, um, which lets everybody uh, know that this laptop has been offered to an employee and therefore should not be offered or assigned to anybody else. The asset is also gonna show a direct link to this ticket, um, which provides even further uh, visibility and connectivity between our assets database and the service requests themselves. And this also means um, because this is in the offered status that now we have in our assets database one less MacBook Pro 13 inch in the in stock status, which would be like the default status before something is offered or assigned to an employee. If I head over to the details section of this ticket, we can see that there's another asset object field included on this ticket called affected equipment. And if I expand this, we can see some similar information to that MacBook, uh, that laptop models uh, field we were looking at before. So this is actually representing my current laptop that is, um, is deployed and assigned to me. We can see all of that information here. And we can also see the status of this laptop is now damaged. So because I submitted this ticket, there is another automation that is taking that object that is assigned to me and uh, changing the status to damaged. And this is uh, really helping our agents uh, with some quick and easy access um, to gather all the information they need now on my damaged laptop. And it is also saving us time by automatically setting that status. So nobody needs to go in and manually um, change the status on that laptop. We are utilizing automation to change the status on the asset object itself. We talked about um, approvers out on the portal. We can see here that Vicki Murphy was set in the approvers field, and therefore now this ticket is waiting for her approval. And this was also uh, this is also utilizing automation and also utilizing assets. In our site, we have our employees built out as objects in our assets section as well. And each employee is uh, linked to a department and a manager via what JSM refers to as references, which are essentially just links between two specific objects in our assets database. In this instance, Vicky is the department manager uh, of my department. So she has been added as the approver for my laptop request. 
and um, for some insight as well, uh, references are also how JSM added my old laptop to this ticket. And by utilizing references in automation, you can um, have some pretty powerful efficiency gains as tickets are created and worked in JSM. And then, like I said, a reference is just a connection between um, two objects in our assets database. So with that, let's go over to our assets database and we will look at how some of this stuff is configured. <clears throat> assets is a really scalable and robust tool. It can be configured in a variety of ways. Like I mentioned, we have our employees built out in here as well as um, equipment and um, We've got some CMDB information in here. We've got some CRM information in here. So there's a lot of different ways to use the, um, the assets uh, management side of JIRA service management. Here we see all of our different object schemas. These all contain different types of objects. Essentially schemas are just groups of different object types. Um, we can see the IT employee assets schema. If we click in here, we can see all the different object types that are within this schema. So we've got some different types of hardware, including laptops, monitors, phones. We've got some metadata types. We've got some other object types in here. If I click on the laptop object type, we can see all of the different um, laptops that we have built out in here. Um, and if I click on this one, this is the uh, current object that is assigned to me. We can see that I'm set as the owner. We can see that status again has changed to damaged because I submitted that ticket. We can also see some linked issues on this object. So um, these are any tickets in JIRA service management that have this object um, associated with them or set as the value in, um, in a particular field. Um, there are some quick filtering options here. I could change this from active to, um, I could set a JQL filter here. Um, so I could, I could filter that list of related issues um, if I need to. And then um, we can see some linked objects here as well. So we can see that this is linked to our St. Louis location and also linked to me as the owner. If I go back to assets now and go to employees, We've got our internal organization chart built out so we can see how that's configured. Um, we see that each of our employees uh, are built as um, objects within the employee object type. And we can see all of the different attributes on um, the individual employees. Um, a lot of these attributes um, are just text fields, but um, you can have a variety of different attributes and a variety of different uh, field types as well so you can um, you can create as many of these as you'd like they don't necessarily need to be text fields they can be um, you can see you've got several different options here um, so there's a lot of uh, flexibility in the way that you build these um, attributes on your objects and then we can also see here this is actually pulling my jira user so here's my jira account and we've set me as the user for this um, employee object so a lot, of, a lot of flexibility with your attributes on your objects. Um, and then we can see those same references. So we can see this laptop references back to me, I'm the owner. And then we can see some information here about uh, who's my manager, uh, where am I located, um, et cetera. And then um, if we click on object graph, we can get a visual representation of everything that my user object is, or rather my employee object is associated with. So we can see my manager over here, Vicky. We can see that I'm in the HR department. I'm located in New York. Here's that laptop that's assigned to me. And um, we can actually click into some of these objects and see information about uh, them as well. So we can see all of this stuff that's assigned to Vicky, including myself, her manager, uh, what department is she, the manager of, et cetera. So um, that's another way to get a uh, representation of all of your references between your objects and how they are related to each other. 
And that's going to finish it up for our service and asset management demo. Um, just a quick look on how you can combine um, your service management processes, your um, assets, and automation to, um, again, leverage some uh, efficiencies and, uh, and present a lot of information to your agents. All right, so we will move into the next demo, which is gonna be our incident management demo. And uh, this is really for our IT operations department. And the challenge we see here is uh, how do you respond quickly to get things back on track and ensure proper follow-up when an incident occurs? Our solution is gonna be a centrally managed alerting system, tracking of deployments and service relationships, and integrated communications. And the tools we will use for that are Jira Service Management, Ops Genie, Status Page, and Confluence. So I am gonna go back to our Help Center. Just one moment. And I'm gonna submit a different request type this time. I'll go to servers and infrastructure and we will report a system problem. And I'm just gonna say that the website is down. I'm not sure what happened here. And we see some information right here. When I type in website is down, we can see that the um, suggested articles uh, section has appeared. These are articles stored in our knowledge base, which is powered by Confluence. And um, the idea here is to promote ticket deflection. So these articles are uh, linked to this request type and populating via keywords. Um, we see that website is uh, highlighted in bold here. And that's how uh, these articles are being served up to me um, as the customer. And uh, the idea is for me to read these articles and potentially solve my own problem. Um, in this case, the website is down. Um, I'm probably not gonna be able to solve that myself. So um, I'm gonna commit, uh, continue submitting this request. So I'll add a description here. Uh, it's not working. And we see that affected services field again that we talked about uh, before. This is another example of an assets object field. Um, affected services is a little unique in that it does not require JSM premium to be able to be used. It is a system field in Jira service management. Um, you do need to have the incident management feature turned on in your project, however, um, to be able to use this. And we'll talk a little bit about how to enable these features towards the end of the webinar. Um, this one is also unique in that it's a, a multi-select field, so I could actually select more than one service here if I wanted to, um, if perhaps this incident is affecting more than one of our services, um, whereas that laptop field we saw on the previous um, request form was just a single select field. I'll select website because the website is um, having an error. Um, I don't need to fill out anything in these fields. They are not required. We don't see that red asterisk here. Um, but we do have the attachment field and some other information we could gather from our um, from our customer if we need that. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this ticket. And uh, one thing I want to call out here is this status update uh, section. And we see the status uh, website is down, and I can click click uh, view status page to actually view the status um, of what this alert is referring to. Um, this is uh, utilizing status page. This is just an example page. It's, it's not showing that the website is actually down, but this is kind of what you can do with status page. And so you can have your services uh, listed here and uh, make, make some updates and, and in real time show your customers what's going on. And so um, this alert has been added by an agent uh, or an admin to let us know that, hey, we are aware that the website is down and we're working on it. Um, and that's just a quick example of how to um, utilize status page out on the portal to uh, communicate information to your customers. We'll go uh, to the back end of this ticket again. And the goal here really is to um, find the cause of this uh, incident as quickly 
and efficiently as possible um, in order to resolve this issue as quickly as possible. So we see here our effective services field. This is where I added website on the, um, on the request form. We can open this up for some additional information. And we can see here, there's 23 open incidents on this service. So these are all tickets in JSM that have website selected as the affected service. And um, the idea here is to really paint that bigger picture of um, what's going on with this, with this service. Is, is there more than one um, issue happening at the same time? Are these requests all uh, related to the same problem that's having happening with this service. Um, so this can help our agents um, really get that holistic view of what's going on and ultimately help lead to a quicker resolution of the issue. Um, and also maybe maybe draw some more attention to an incident. If there's this many incidents open on uh, an, a, a one of our services, then perhaps there is a much larger issue at hand here and it's not just a problem with the website. Maybe there is a much larger issue um, at hand here. We also see some other information here. We can see the tier of this service and this is a tier one service. And we're gonna um, talk a little bit more about tiers on our affected services in our next demo uh, for change management. We can also look at this section, which is changes on affected services. And we'll give that a minute to populate. And we can see that there are, have been um, several changes that have been enacted on this service. And so the idea here is um, to provide our agents a list of all the changes that have um, been made on this service, which again is the website. And, um, and these uh, will provide insight into maybe one of these changes is actually causing this incident. Um, so we could view these changes and review what, what took place with these changes and maybe um, gather some insight into why we have so many incidents on our uh, website. We've got our investigate button at the top of the incident, which connects to um, Bitbucket, which is our CICD pipeline. And this is gonna show any recent code deployments that are related to this service. Um, these deployments may give us, um, again, more insight into um, maybe something that is the cause of this incident. Um, I can hover over this deployment and I can say select as potential cause. And um, then I would click add potential causes and uh, that would uh, populate on the ticket and again, provide more insight for other agents uh, viewing this ticket as um, this could be the potential cause of this incident, the website being down. And we're gonna spend more time covering Bitbucket um, in our last demo as well. If we scroll to the bottom of this ticket, we can see that there is um, an extra button here or an extra link that I can click in the comment section. Uh, normally we would just have internal notes and reply to customer, but we've also got informed stakeholders. Uh, the stakeholders feature is also a part of the advanced ITSM feature set in Jira Service Management and would include individuals who need to be aware of an incident, but aren't necessarily gonna be actively working on a ticket. Um, using this function, we'll send an email to both the incident responders of the affected service and anyone who has been added to the stakeholder list. So that is there uh, for your incidents if you so need it. Also on the right-hand side, we have our major incident toggle. Uh, utilizing this feature is going to add um, a queue to your project. And if I turn this on, this would add this incident to that major incidents queue. Um, and the idea is to uh, really shine a light on those incidents and say, these are major incidents. They need to be worked on immediately and need um, all hands on deck to get them resolved. Um, and you may not have a queue set up in your project already for your major incidents, but you can um, set that up very, uh, very simply. Um, we cover how to set up queues in that fundamentals webinar, um, again, which is posted on our YouTube page. And um, there's, there's opportunities as well with major incidents to utilize automation um, and some other uh, functionality to send notifications to perhaps a group of individuals who need to know about major incidents as soon as they occur. So you could toggle this on and an automation could see that and send those notifications and get people working on this major incident 
as quickly as possible. So let's say for an example, this incident has been resolved. We're ready to close out the ticket. We can head to the top of the ticket and click add PIR. And this is going to um, pull up a new screen uh, for a post incident review. Um, this is a create screen. It will actually create a new issue. Um, we can see the issue type here, post incident review, and we can um, and we can fill this out, and it will be related back to our um, back to our incident. We can see here it's pre-populated linked issues with reviews, and then the issue key of the incident that I submitted. Um, so there's a lot of uh, good interconnectivity there. Um, I'll just show a um, a previous PIR that was filled out um, for a different ticket, and um, we can see some good information on here. We can see um, all of this information on the, uh, the incident itself. So when was the incident created? Um, this one is currently ongoing still, but uh, if it was resolved, we would see that here. We can see who was working on it, who the responders were, and uh, what the affected service was. <clears throat> So utilizing PIRs is, uh, is a good practice to, um, to review uh, what happened with an incident, how was it solved, and then we can connect back to tickets. We can see here there was a primary incident, and it's linked to some, um, to some other incidents as well. So let's go back to our um, existing incident. And we'll review just a couple more um, of the advanced features related to incident management. Uh, we can see conference call here. So clicking this would start a conference call that will be joinable throughout the lifespan of this ticket. That is powered through Ops Genie, um, which again is included uh, within JSM Premium. And any agent would be able to join this conference call directly from the ticket. And you can utilize uh, video conferencing, chat, you can add notes, you can add additional responders to the call from the conference call, et cetera. So um, pretty powerful feature there to, um, again, enhance that collaboration and um, get your incidents resolved as quickly as possible. Directly under that, we can see our um, chat channel. So we can create a chat channel um, and can connect to um, Slack or Microsoft Teams and have a dedicated channel for this incident and, um, and agents can interact and uh, collaborate and get this incident uh, resolved as quickly as possible by using that chat channel. And our responders are actually built out via Ops Genie. And we will transition to Ops Genie now. And we'll take a look at how Ops Genie works. So I mentioned before, uh, Ops Genie is Atlassian's incident alerting and response tool, and it can connect J uh, Jira service management with your monitoring tools. Um, alerts created within Ops Genie can become issues or tickets within Jira service management, and issues in Jira service management can trigger alerts in Ops Genie. So you can set this up to where, let's say, a, um, an incident comes through and it's on a tier one service that could trigger uh, Ops Genie to send alerts to your responder team. Um, you can uh, get alerts via email, phone calls, uh, text messages, a variety of ways, um, and it can work vice versa. If somebody creates an alert in Ops Genie, that could trigger uh, a ticket to be created in Jira Service Management. So you can really uh, integrate the two tools to. Um, connect everything and uh, send those alerts um, when they are needed to be sent. So if I navigate to the Teams tab, and I'll just, uh, I'll just click any team here. Within our teams, this is where we'll build out our um, routing rules, our escalation policies, and our on-call schedules for our responder teams. So, um, we can see here uh, some parameters have been set up for our uh, escalation policies. So an alert is sent out and uh, the first person doesn't acknowledge it. After X amount of time, the next person in the schedule uh, will be sent an alert. 
and so on and so forth until the um, until the alert is acknowledged. We can see our on-call schedules here. So who will be notified first um, when an alert comes through? And um, the thing to note about um, our teams and ops Genie in general is it's really only as powerful as the integrations that have been configured. So if we head over to integrations, we can click add integration. And this is where we can set up that connectivity between Ops Genie and Jira Service Management, for instance. We can see some other uh, Atlassian products here at the top. Um, we've got some featured options here. So I mentioned Slack before. We can send, um, we can integrate with Zoom. Um, we can integrate with almost anything via the uh, API integration here. We've got email, which is a popular one. And then as we scroll down, we can see all of the uh, major uh, monitoring tools and things of that nature. So we've got, of course, you know, Datadog and we've got GitHub and GitLab and just a very wide variety of, um, of integrations uh, available here. And like I mentioned, if you don't see your specific monitoring tool, you can um, just use the API integration here. I'm going to go back to our team section and just talk through a couple other things here. Um, so if we did have an integration set up with this team, we can see there's a couple set up here. The names, what product are they integrated with, and if they are um, active or not. Lastly, our heartbeat section. This is a way to um, ping a service at a specific interval. And this can be these can be used to create um, alerts if a ping is not uh, received back in a certain amount of time. So maybe you want to ping a server or some other um, some other piece of equipment to make sure that it's up and running. And then uh, if that heartbeat is not received back in the um, configured amount of time, your team could um, receive an alert via Ops Genie. So a lot of powerful alerting. Um, uh, tools and um, options here within Ops Genie. It is a very robust tool and uh, can be really helpful, again, for your incident management uh, processes to uh, get notified as quickly as possible and get somebody working on a solution for that incident as quickly as possible. All right, we're going to move into our last demo, which is change management. This is really <clears throat> tailored towards our change managers and our developers. The challenges we see are how to manage risk, coordinate changes, and ease bureaucratic effort on our changes. Our solution is going to be automated risk assessment, ticket creation, and resolution. And the tools we are going to use for this demo are Jira Service Management, Bitbucket, and then Automation. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually head to a different project, and this is a uh, Jira software project. And I'm going to create a new ticket. I'm going to say add Jira to the payroll system. And I'll create this ticket. We'll go ahead and view that ticket. And we see here this ticket is now um, submitted. It's pending approval. Um, not much to look at here. Um, because this is a software ticket, we're not able to um, utilize the JSM portal or form fields or forms. But we're going to see how this is going to relate back to JSM within this demo. So we are going to head over to Bitbucket now which again is our uh, CICD pipeline, um, code repository, uh, et cetera. And um, so I'm the developer in this instance. I've received this ticket, add Euro to the payroll system. So I'm going to go over here and go to our payroll deposit repository. And um, I'm just going to make a change in this um, sample piece of code. I'll edit this. And I am just going to change 
this last line here. So we'll remove Mike and we'll just add my name. And I'll click commit. And once I commit this change, I'm prompted to submit a commit message. And so um, I'm going to say updated per my ticket number was SSP-115. So I will add that here in my commit message. And we'll click commit. And really our best practice here is to include that issue key of the software ticket we created just for visibility and to know why was this change uh, made. It was made because this software ticket was created. And we can see there's even a link directly to the software ticket here, which is great. I'll click on our pipeline and we can see that my commit is in progress and we're just gonna give this a second to um, make sure that this, uh, this is deployed successfully. And it does just take a second or two to commit these changes. All right, and we can see now that this change was successful. So if I go back to our software ticket now and refresh. I'll have to actually locate the ticket again. There we go. Sorry, things are just moving a little slow here. We should see some updates on this ticket now. We see in the uh, development field here that there has been one commit and we can actually uh, use this to um, open that commit and go back to um, Bitbucket to view that commit and see what happened um, and what was changed, etc. cetera. Um, in our linked issues section, we can see that this ticket that I submitted is now linked to a change ticket, which is this one ITSD dash 700 and reflects all the information on that change that was uh, made in Bitbucket. Um, this was created automatically when that code was deployed. Um, it created the change over in JSM. And we can also see that this change is uh, in the completed status. So um, the commit was uh, made, it was deployed, it created the change request, it linked that to my original request, and then it also moved the change into the completed status. And you guessed it, that is powered by automation. Um, might seem a little odd though, that a change request was created and completed without going through any kind of approval or cab or anything like that. But in this case, it's because the payroll system, which if we click into this change request, we can see that this is related to our payroll system, uh, which is right here. It's because the payroll system is a tier three service. And we have our instance set up to where tier three services do not require um, approvals on, on uh, any changes. And the idea here is to um, create those efficiencies by automating several processes and steps to deploy this particular change. And then like I mentioned, once this change was deployed, the change request ticket was automatically created, transitioned to completed, and link to the original software ticket um, and all that relevant information is in the JSM ticket, uh, this change ticket as well. So a lot of cool stuff happening there. We'll do another demo that's going to be um, similar, but we are going to use a tier one service and look at how that um, will play out with all of our different tools here. So uh, I'll just say update to the mobile app. And I'll make sure that's spelled correctly. And we will go ahead and create this ticket. 
And so I'll view this ticket. And so again, as uh, one of our developers, I'm going to go back to Bitbucket. I've received this ticket um, update to the mobile app. I'll go back to our repositories and click into mobile app. So I'll just make another commit here and uh, same commit message. Go to our pipeline. We'll give this just a second to build. And you can actually see what's happening on this uh, commit when you click into the commit. And again, it does just take a second or two. Okay, so now we should have a new change request, which we do. And like I mentioned before, this is that tier one service, so it is going to uh, require an approval. I'll just approve this ticket. And then we're going to transition it to implementing. So now that this change is implementing, we'll go back to Bitbucket and we can see now the change is gonna deploy. So it was looking for that implementing status, which again is part of an automation that's connecting Bitbucket to JSM and uh, in turn back to our Jira software ticket, which is where this whole, um, this whole change uh, originated from. So once we see that this is complete or successful, we can um, go back to our software ticket and we'll see some um, updates on that as well. And we see that now it's successful. I'll go back to our software ticket and refresh. And we'll give this just a minute to load. And here we see now both of those changes are linked um, because we made two um, commit messages with that issue key within them. We can see they're both done, they're both completed. The change, uh, this, this deployment was also um, transitioned to completed via automation. So once the um, commit in Bitbucket was successful, it triggered an automation on this ticket to transition it to completed. And uh, again, all of that is reflected on this original software ticket. So we've got a paper trail, we've got links, we've got all kinds of information on here to um, see that visibility and see uh, where did this change originate? What happened with this change? Uh, where was the commit message? Who triggered it? Uh, who requested it? All kinds of information. So. Um, Lots of, uh, lots of uh, like I mentioned, a paper trail here and um, lots of links. And again, a lot that all powered by um, JSM, Bitbucket, automation, and even Jira software. So you can really connect all of these tools to um, uh, enhance uh, your, your processes. You have time efficiency gains you can create with those um, affected services and your tiers, uh, deciding whether or not you are going to um, to require approvals on um, your uh, your various tickets and all kinds of stuff. So um, a lot of great uh, ways to increase uh, your efficiency and enhance your ITSM processes by, um, by utilizing all of these different tools that Atlassian has to offer. All right, so that is gonna conclude
our demo uh, for this morning. Um, if anybody's got any questions, I'm going to take a quick look at the Q&A section. Um, but the automation of the SSP116 ticket also move it to done. Um, it certainly could. We don't have it configured that way um, in this demo site, but you could add that as an automation. So um, maybe it says when a linked change is moved to done, um, automatically move this request to done. You might want that, you might not. Maybe there's some additional interaction that needs to happen between the development team and the uh, reporter or the requester of the ticket. But you could certainly set up automation to do that and really close the door on that entire process. So that's a really great question. And um, yes, you definitely could do that. And automations can work in tandem. So you can write several rules that can be triggered by each other. Um, or you could write just one really long rule that may or may not work in this situation. But um, yeah, that's, that's a great question and a great call out that automation could really, um, you know, put a, put a stamp on this whole request here in this scenario that we were showing on that software ticket and close that software ticket based on some criteria. Again, maybe that being that um, the linked change was uh, completed, therefore close this software ticket. So great question. All right. Um, if there's no other questions, I think we can go ahead and uh, wrap things up today. So um, <clears throat> again, really appreciate everybody's time this morning. Hopefully you got some valuable information on um, Jira service management and how it can be used to um, manage your ITSM processes. I know we looked at a lot of different tools um, within the Atlassian ecosystem. And again, the um, the takeaway here is to how to link all these uh, tools together to enhance those processes. So your service requests, your incident management, and change management, um, just to name a few, and that's what we covered this morning. Um, that's going to do it for this morning. Um, we do have some, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we have all kinds of different webinars and classes available on our um, valiantis.com slash events page. So feel free to take a look at those. We do... Um, several free webinars like this one. We do have that JSM Fundamentals webinar, which is available um, every couple of months. And uh, they are, again, all posted on our YouTube page as well. So feel free to um, view some of those uh, on our YouTube page. We mentioned the boot camps. These are deeper dives than what we have time to do in an hour. Um, the JSM one is two days, and we get much deeper into these ITSM processes. So. Um, if you think that could be of value to you, um, please feel free to um, look those up on our website. Um, if you have any questions um, about the material presented today or anything else in the Atlassian ecosystem, um, feel free to contact me uh, via LinkedIn or um, email, and then this QR code will take you to that events page. So um, like I say, feel free to contact me um, directly and we can put you in, uh, in touch with the right people to answer your um, Elastian related questions. And that'll do it for today. So again, thanks everybody for um, joining us today and um, hope to see you at another one of our webinars soon. Thanks again.